Hi, I'm Kent. Let's talk about bubbles and plaster. One of the ongoing challenges in making plaster molds for slip casting is getting bubbles in the plaster. I've had a few videos on my channel about this, and then there have also been a variety of comments on and off about ways to address bubbles. Now that I have my one part mold system working, I want to go ahead and revisit that. So first off, which plaster should you use? So I'm using USGS number one pottery plaster. This is specifically designed for pottery. If you're in the US or probably North America more generally, get this plaster. If you're somewhere else, go and ask your local pottery shop what the best plaster to use is. These plasters have been specifically designed so that they suck the water out of the slip. Water is then absorbed into the plaster and transmitted to the outside. It's part of the magic behind how slip casting works. So that's the right thing to do in terms of getting the plaster. The challenge comes to when we mix the dry plaster with the water. It's very easy to get bubbles. And there are a few different stages that we can talk about how to address bubbles. All right, so before we dive into bubbles, let's talk about the overall workflow. So first we needed to know the volume of our mold. My mold system does this all automatically. Since it's doing all the 3D modeling for us, it just spits out the number for us. It actually spits out the volume. It spits out the amount of dry plaster and the amount of water we need. I'm using 70 parts of water to 100 parts of dry plaster. This is in the range of what's recommended by the manufacturer. And if you look around at other sources, it's actually pretty consistent as well. We will then take the dry plaster and put it onto the wet. Potentially you could do it the other way around, but I think I learned long ago with Alton Brown and baking, it's better to put the dry on the wet. That way there's no dry clumps that get stuck on the bottom. And then slakes, I'm slaking my plaster for three and a half minutes. I did some tests early on to look at how long to slake and how long to mix, and that's been working for me. The slaking goes ahead and hydrates all the dry plaster, and then we mix. There's some divergent opinions on mixing and their impact on bubbles. The manufacturer actually talks about mixing more vigorously to create stronger plaster. There are several people that recommend mixing by hand, and I think that winds up being a way to reduce bubbles. By mixing, when you're mixing with hand, you are less likely to introduce air into the plaster because you're mixing around less. However, I think that will also result in a weaker plaster. I haven't tested that, I've never actually mixed by hand. I've just been going with the manufacturer's recommendation and mixing it with my drill. So when we mix it, the real challenge is sucking air down into the plaster. I've actually looked at a couple different mixing attachments for my drill, seeing if that might impact it. This is one I had laying around, it's just been sitting on the shelf forever, it's all caked in plaster. I don't use this anymore. It's more of this fan type. This one here is more of a squirrel cage, so it spins around. The problem is when we're mixing, as it spins around, it's likely to create a vortex, and the vortex will suck air down into the plaster. Kurt Hamley recently did a demonstration of this, talking about how he mixed plaster. Basically, you want to match the volume of plaster you're mixing up to the size and shape of your bucket. If you have too little plaster, the vortex can actually spin around and suck air down relatively easily. Kind of counterintuitively, if you have a lot of plaster, if it's really deep, it's much less likely for that vortex to suck air down in. That then means that you need a bunch of different buckets for different amounts of plaster you're mixing up. And that seems kind of annoying to me. Overall, I found relatively little difference in the different mixing attachments I've used. And finding this kind of Goldilocks zone of the amount of plaster in the right shape bucket, I think is a little bit tricky. Maybe if you were consistently mixing up the right amount of plaster, or maybe you always mixed up more plaster than you needed and just let the extra plaster go to waste or poured it into some sort of bat that you could use for something else. That may work okay, but I really like to mix up the amount of plaster I need just for my mold. I suspect there's also a fair amount of air in the plaster even when it's just slaking. So this is a very fine powder, and I think as it goes into the water, it's probably sucking air down. So even before you're mixing it, I think we're starting behind the curve in terms of amount of air inside the plaster. Okay, so we go ahead and we slake the plaster for three and a half minutes. We mix it up ideally in the right size bucket with the right amount of volume so we're not creating a vortex and sucking the plaster down. I mix mine up for four minutes and then we pour it into our mold. So we have our inner form. This is the shape of the pot we want to make. We then put some structure around it like this and pour the plaster on the inside. This again is using my mold system. These could be cottle boards. You could be doing this as a bucket. The outside doesn't really matter in terms of the bubbles and pouring the plaster. And then you pour the plaster down the inside. There's a couple more opportunities here to try and mitigate bubbles. One is using Windex or something similar. The theory is that it would also help break the surface tension of any bubbles in the plaster, since there's a lot of water in the plaster. I haven't tested this rigorously. It seems like it should work, but I've definitely still gotten bubbles by using the Windex. There may be a timing factor as well. Maybe it still needs to be wet, or maybe there's an amount that needs to be put on. Often there are some recommendations about doing some practice, but there's usually some hidden variables in there. In this case, how much do I put on? How long do I let it wait? If one way works and the other way doesn't, but you don't actually know what you changed, it's really hard to, one, make a recommendation or know why it worked. And this is my science brain working again. Okay, so potentially Windex may, may or may not help. 
And then the other variable that I know about is how you pour the plaster. So if we have the plaster, we can take it up high and ideally you pour it in a nice thin stream. I've seen this recommendation for resin and the idea with a thin stream is that there's not a lot of area left in the stream going down. So potentially the bubbles are on the outside and they will pop as they're flowing down into the mold. You also potentially want to hit the empty space in the mold and not hit the mold itself. By hitting the mold itself, potentially you will trap air as the plaster contacts the mold. The last suggestion is to go ahead and try and remove some of the bubbles in the plaster itself. So once the plaster is in the mold, we can tap the side of the mold and hopefully shake some of the bubbles free and rise it to the top. That's part of the idea behind why we are pouring the mold this way. We want any bubbles to rise away from the surface of the pot. They'd wind up on the outside of the mold as opposed to the inside. That's why we're pouring it upside down. By tapping it or shaking it, hopefully we could release more bubbles as well. I've definitely seen a few others use this approach. Vantiki uses this for his very intricate molds and I think Hammerly does as well. They use shaker tables to do that. I haven't shown this on my channel in quite a while. I actually have a shaker table myself. I got this at a surplus auction. It was from a biotech company that closed down. It's meant to hold beakers and will kind of vibrate around in circles. And I've tried a couple different ways to basically put the mold on top of here and have it shake and rotate and try and get the bubbles to release. There's a couple of ideas behind using the shaker table, I think. One is similar to tapping. The bubbles can potentially rise to the surface by just shaking them free. The other thing is as plaster sets, it becomes thixotropic, much like slip. What that means is as it's being stirred, it winds up being thinner, and as it sits, it winds up being thicker. So by shaking the plaster around, hopefully we're moving it into the thinner side of its consistency, and that would be more likely to let the bubbles float to the surface. Obviously, once the plaster is already inside the form, it'd be really hard to mix it around in any real way. So our really only option is to try and impart that vibration from the outside. So I've used this a variety of times, not with 100% success. I did manage to have a plaster disaster using this. I wound up having my mold break free and got plaster everywhere, which was a mess, especially on top of this. And even when I use it, I'm not consistently getting all the bubbles out. So there's some other variables here at play that I'm not controlling for. So I know this can work, but there definitely are some tricks that I'm missing to get it to work consistently. I know of one other option that I hadn't tried so far of getting the bubbles out of the plaster, and that's actually what I wanna test in this video. So this here is in the category of overkill most likely, but hopefully it would let me solve my bubble problems once and for all. So this is a vacuum chamber and a vacuum pump. These are often used when mixing resin, so you wind up degassing the resin as you're mixing it to pull all the bubbles out so they don't wind up in the final part that you're making. I've heard of doing basically something similar with plaster. So we will go ahead and mix the plaster together. We will then degas it once it's been mixed, pull all the bubbles out or as many as we can get. We can then pour that into the mold. I don't think we can actually degas the mold itself. Since I am 3D printing these molds, there's actually some voids in there and I think the vacuum would potentially deform the molds. So this probably isn't a solution for everyone, but since I've been making a fair number of molds recently, I wanted to see if I can find something that would consistently work. I think with the right combination of all those other variables and playing around with it, you can get something that's very effective. And that's what I've been showing in my channel recently with this plaster deep dive series. However, I had the opportunity to try this out, so let's see how it goes. All right, so I think I have everything set up. It's getting a little bit crowded. So first, I wanna talk about the last mold I made. In general, the surface finish is really good. It's basically copying the 3D printed part, as far as I can tell, more or less perfectly. I don't have any obvious bubbles on the inside. There might be a few tiny pinhole ones, but that's it. There are a few on the outside. So I have you know, a couple here and a couple here. Now the outside of the mold obviously doesn't really matter, but I think that's kind of indicative of the bubbles still being inside the plaster. Eventually, as I use this mold, it will erode the plaster surface on the inside and potentially expose bubbles. So it's really those that I'm trying to get rid of. And so for this test, I'm gonna remake that mold. I am reusing my 3D printed part. This is actually the third time I'm casting plaster in it. And so far it's holding up pretty well. I have just washed off the plaster. I didn't get it perfect, but I got pretty good and reassembled it. The 3D print is starting to crack in a few places. I've over tightened it, I think, a little bit and a few of the inserts are starting to spin free. But overall, I think it's holding up pretty well. So for those of you wondering if this is reusable, the answer is yes, at least for a few plaster pores. Probably not as good as silicone, but more than one part for sure. So what's the plan? I'm going to go ahead and take the dry and put it on the wet and let it slake. I'm actually gonna test and see if there is air that comes out at that point. Once it's done slaking, we will go ahead and mix it. After it's done mixing, we'll put it in the vacuum chainer, see if we can get all the bubbles out, and then we will pour it as carefully as possible into the 3D printed mold. All right, dry onto the wet. 
So now the plaster is hydrating. I'm actually gonna put this in the vacuum chamber and see how much air I pull out just at this stage. Right, that's fascinating. Definitely pulling bubbles out of just the slaking plaster. Way more than I was expecting. Done slaking. Let's go ahead and mix. I think I'm just going to go ahead and mix it in here. So there was a vortex. It's what you don't want. I'm going to not worry about this time and see how just degassing works for us. All right, so let's go ahead and pull a vacuum on this and see if we can get all these bubbles out. They're definitely rising to the stop. I'm worried we're fighting against the plaster setting. So I'm give this a quick, oh yeah, it's starting to set. I was wondering if it was just going th thixotropic, and the answer is no. All right, so I think we let it degas too long, so let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reset and change my strategy of when I'm gonna apply the vacuum. Well, that was exciting. Setting plaster is always fun to deal with, but I got it in time. So I've gone ahead and reset. So let's try that again. So what went wrong? I think I had the plaster in the vacuum the second time too long. I was waiting for the bubbles to foam up and they never quite did, not the way I was expecting. Or by the time they did, the plaster was already getting really thick. I thought maybe it had just gone thixotropic. And so I went ahead and tried to mix it a little bit more. And no, that wasn't the case. It was actually starting to set. So what am I gonna do differently this time? I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in the vacuum during the slaking period again. I definitely did pull out a bunch of bubbles. This time I'm going to be much more careful about mixing it. I was pretty vigorous last time and definitely pulled in a bunch of air that I didn't need to. So this time I'm going to go ahead and mix it normally and try and avoid most of the air bubbles. I'll then put it in the vacuum, but probably just for a little bit. Make sure it's not in there too long so that I can go ahead and pour it into the mold. That's the idea. Let's go ahead and try it out. Just like last time, the dry into the wet. Go ahead and degas this. All right, let's go ahead and mix. More gently this time. All right, still good consistency. Let's vacuum it one more time. I'm still pulling bubbles out, but I don't want it to set. Pull it out. Definitely still liquid. Anything I'm going to do, I'm going to try and pour it down the edge. 
I'll give it a few taps. The last time I waited too long, this time I was pushing it a little bit. I think I could have let it go a little bit longer with the vacuum. I definitely have some small bubbles at the top. Let's go ahead and let it set and we will see. Okay, the plaster is set. Let's go ahead and demold this. All right, the bottom is looking good so far. And it looks like our 3D printed mold is holding up again. It should just split apart. All right, so this is the real test about our bubbles and I still see some on the outside. That's not too surprising since I saw some in the top. Let's go ahead and clean this up while it's still pretty soft. All right, so we can pull the inside out. Okay, this slushy mixture here is a mixture of alcohol and ice that's been in my freezer for a while. It's very cold. It's about zero degrees Fahrenheit. The idea is to put it in and try and shrink the PLA just a little bit so it pops out because it is stuck. All right, here we go. All right, here is our mold. As I mentioned, there definitely are a few pinhole bubbles on the outside. And looking at the inside, I am seeing some down in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see these or not. So like right here, they aren't through the surface, I don't think, but I think they're just below the surface. So there's some just sneaking under the surface there. And I see some farther down as well. So compared to this one, which is the dry one, is it obviously better? I don't think the answer is yes, which is a little bit surprising. It's a few days later and I've tried this a few more times. I noticed a couple things. One was I wasn't pulling full pressure on the vacuum chamber. So I tightened up the fittings and it's getting down to pressure much faster now. So I think that was helping. But I'm still running into a problem with the timing of mixing the plaster and pulling the vacuum. As I mentioned, my overall process is to slake for three and a half minutes and then mix for four. The slaking for three and a half minutes, I think I can do the normal way. While I tested putting it into the vacuum this time, I don't actually think I really want to do that. So that was basically just testing my hypothesis of is there error in just regular slaked plaster? And the answer is yes. So even if you're very careful with mixing the plaster, there's residual air in there that ideally you would somehow get out. I also think that pulling the vacuum on the slaking plaster is starting the mixing process. I don't exactly know what causes plaster to start curing. I've heard that you can let plaster slake for a long time just to let it sit and it will not start the curing process. So I'm guessing the movement from the bubbles escaping is starting the timer faster than I would normally if I just let it sit there. And then for the mixing itself, I want to go ahead and mix this for four minutes, or at least that's what I was doing normally. However, it takes a minute or two to pull the vacuum. And once the vacuum's pulled, it needs more time to go and extract and degas the plaster itself. The plaster is pretty thick. So what I think that all means is I really want to mix the plaster while it's under vacuum. I think in an ideal world, I'd go ahead and take the dry plaster and put it into the wet and then put it into the vacuum chainer, pull the vacuum, let it start slaking. And then while the vacuum is still applied, go ahead and start mixing. That would give a head start on evacuating any air in the slaking plaster. And I'd also get a head start in pulling the vacuum to get the air out after mixing. The problem is this is a vacuum chainer and to mix it, I would somehow need to punch a hole. I've seen a couple of different things online. One is to actually go ahead and put a motor inside of this and just run a couple wires. Those are relatively easy to seal against. I would then somehow need to mount the motor inside and attach it to the mixing attachment and the motor would have to survive the vacuum. That seems possible, but like a lot of work. The other option is to somehow run a shaft through the outside of the vacuum chamber. I saw one picture where they somehow made a hole into the outside of the metal part. The other option is to go through the plastic. 
I'd really rather not drill a hole in this. I was looking around and there are options that would not require drilling a hole. So there's a thing called a magnetic coupler. Basically it's two super strong magnets or probably arrays of magnets. So you can then apply torque on one side and then have an air gap, or in this case a plastic gap, and then have the torque applied to the other side. So potentially I could have an array of magnets on the top side with my drill. On the inside have the other array of magnets and then have the mixer down into the plaster. I think that would work. Although looking on McMaster card, those range from 100 to $200. I'm not sure it actually fixed the problem. So this should work somehow. I just don't know exactly how. There's this timing between the vacuum and the mixing. A lot of you will probably say this is overkill and I agree. I think it is overkill. This isn't a solution for everyone, but I'm curious about trying to make it work. So if you have any insights on ways that I could make this work, I would be very curious. If you have pointers to other videos or you've done this yourself, I'd be curious to know what works and what doesn't both in terms of trying to mix it while under vacuum, as well as getting the timing right in terms of mixing and pulling the vacuum. In the meantime, I'll go back to my old techniques of being careful with mixing and applying some surficant, at least when I remember. If you guys have any questions or comments, do let me know. Thanks.